use of resistance exercise specifically for increasing testosterone, both in men and in women. And indeed, that is a powerful effect of resistance exercise. And indeed, it's mediated by the nerve to muscle connection. I did talk the training is 60 minutes or less will cause increases in serum testosterone that's been shown over and over again. And if the session extends too long past 75 minutes and is of sufficiently high intensity, chances are testosterone levels will start to drop and cortisol levels will go up in ways that can be detrimental to recovery and the goals of the training. But that's different than training that's specifically geared toward increasing testosterone. Duncan French, who's one of the directors of the UFC Performance Center, when he was a graduate student at University of Connecticut Stores, did some beautiful work. He and his colleagues found the ideal training protocols for stimulating testosterone release, which is something that many people want to do for a variety of reasons. And that involved doing six sets of 10 repetitions even if it requires lightening the weight on one set to the next with about two minutes, 120 seconds rest in between sets, which if you think about it is pretty short rest and is pretty darn hard work. Now, what's interesting is that there's a very limited threshold for increasing testosterone. That protocol of six sets of 10 repetitions led to these big increases in serum testosterone. But if people did 10 sets of 10, so just four more repetitions per set, then testosterone did not increase. In fact, you got more of this catabolic cortisol-like pathway. You get other benefits from the so, so-called 10 sets of 10 protocol, but not the testosterone increase and maybe even reductions in testosterone. Now, it's important to point out that that six sets of 10 was done with big compound movements. So things like squats or deadlifts or chin-ups or things of that sort. And those were done as single sessions, not in concert with a bunch of other exercise. Although if athletes are doing that, there's no reason why they couldn't also do other types of training elsewhere in the week. I asked Duncan about this and he mentioned that that done twice a week is probably the maximum amount that anyone could do that and still maintain this increase in testosterone. It's a very interesting protocol because as the, a neuroscientist, it, it's amazing to me that six sets of 10 repetitions with something causes a distinctly, excuse me, causes a distinctly different result in terms of hormone output than 10 sets of 10 of the exact same movement. And it speaks to the in exquisite way in which nerve to muscle connections dictate the whole physiology of your entire system. If there's a theme that I really want to bring forward today is that weight training or resistance training of any kind is really used for either systemic effects, right? 10% of training done where you're feeling that burn, which means lactate will be present and sending signals to your brain and to your heart and to your liver that are beneficial or isolating muscles, which may also generate a kind of a, a lactate or uh, which is associated with the burn result. But that isolation of muscles is distinctly different